Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Hoffman. I'm a software engineer, a security researcher, and a technical author based out of the Pacific Northwest. Today, I wanted to introduce you to the strange and exotic world of Quine algorithms. So here we are on the Wikipedia page for Quines. Wikipedia defines a Quine as a computer program that takes no input and produces a copy of its own source code as its only output. That sounds simple, but in fact, it's actually quite difficult to program. Now, I'm going to put it into perspective. A Quine algorithm is something akin to the concept of a self-replicating machine. So there's a buzzword, self-replicating machine, that describes a futuristic machine that can produce copies of itself. If this machine is a machine that also is capable of, say, manufacturing devices like a refrigerator, then the machine can manufacture a refrigerator and by nature of being able to also manufacture itself, it can create new copies of itself and repair itself. The idea is a self-replicating machine could entirely cut out human interaction in the supply chain and on the manufacturing line. So a Quine is effectively the same thing as a self-replicating machine. In fact, it's a self-replicating program or algorithm. So just in the software space versus in the physical world where it's even more difficult to produce. So the idea of a Quine has been around for a while and Kleene's recursion theorem is one of the early theories that actually indicated the capacity to produce Quines would be possible in Turing complete programming languages. So Kleene's second recursion theorem basically states that if you have a function that can take an input and produce an output What's to stop you from using the function itself as the input and producing the function itself as the output? And you can see Wikipedia even has a subsection application to Quines. So jumping back to Quines, there's a number of different Quines that you could construct. There's a number of ways of constructing these in different programming languages. Sometimes, you can produce them using tricks that make them very short. I'm going to give you a couple examples right here. So this is a false quine that I produced. When you first look at it, it looks as if with a little bit of tweaking, it could produce a copy of its own source code. But there's a number of issues with this. First of all, it's not actually self-referential. So if you're returning a string, you have a false quine rather than a true quine because the function is not taking itself as an input, it's taking a string, which is a separate object, as an input, even if the input is not technically passed through a function parameter, it's passing back a string representing itself. Furthermore, one thing to note is if you're passing back a string, you're actually not getting the entirety of the function. So if you'll notice here, the entirety of the function has false quine, but then has the string false quine. So there's two function definitions. One is a literal function that will be interpreted by the JavaScript interpreter. The one is a string representing a function. So if we were to run this program, all that we would get back is this string. We wouldn't get back a copy of the remaining functionality. And as a result, we wouldn't be able to recursively produce this function. So this is a false quine. And this showcases some of the difficulty with producing quines. Number one, there may be issues with syntax because what you're doing is trying to recursively create functions. Number two, if you're trying to pass back a string, you're not self-referencing, self and also you're not going to be able to return the entirety of the program. So what does a real quine look like? A real quine looks something like this in the Python 8 syntax, or my apologies, the Python 3.8 syntax. If we're to print this into a Python interpreter, we get an output, which we can put right back into the interpreter if we were to copy it. And if we click enter again, we get the same output. So we could indefinitely use this quine to produce new copies of this function. An older example that works in Python versions before 3.8 introduced some new syntax would be this right here or we get an output equal to the input. But the most simple coin I found is this Ruby coin. So this Ruby coin right here, if we evaluate it using the Ruby interpreter, 
we get itself as the output. Now the reason that this works is because the eval is a keyword, in fact it's a function in Ruby that invokes the Ruby interpreter. This is also a function in JavaScript. And what it does is it actually looks at a string and interprets that string as if it was code. In this case, the value s is getting immediately assigned to the string value here that contains the print and eval, allowing it to recurse indefinitely. So what is a quine? A quine is a program that takes itself as an input and provides itself as an output, effectively allowing you to indefinitely produce programs. Now, you could make some more complex meta programs using the concepts behind a quine. For example, you could produce a program that generates itself but also has some side effect. And by doing that, you could create very complex ecosystems for video games or models that are trying to define a world that grows on its own versus growing iteratively through looping or some other more typical process. So that's the fundamentals of a quine. I think it's pretty fascinating as a programming concept, and I hope that you found this video interesting as well. If you have any questions or comments, or if you found any quines that you find to be fascinating due to their size or lack of complexity, please post them in the comment section below the video, and thanks for watching.